Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried for the month of June. So if you are interested in seeing what worked out for me, what didn't, my thoughts on each of the palettes, then just keep watching. This is a new video idea that I'm trying out. I got it from my friend Karen Harris. She does these videos every month and I find them so interesting. So I'm going to list her channel down below in the description box. Make sure you go check her channel out. She does videos like these and amongst other really fun videos. So thank you Karen for the idea. I'm really excited to see how today goes. If you aren't familiar with my channel, palettes are my jam. They are my favorite thing to purchase, my favorite thing to test, my favorite thing to review. I try in abundance of palettes every month. This month, maybe not as much as normal because I was on a low buy, but I still managed to test out 10 new palettes to rank for you guys. Ranking them was relatively easy and most of the palettes were very, very good. So we are going to start off with number 10, the least favorite palette that I tried this month, and that was the Sigma Enchanted Palette. This is really unfortunate because this palette is so stunning. I love the colors in here, but quite frankly, I just don't think the quality is there. Now, I'm not saying you can't get a pretty look with this palette because you most definitely can. And that is what drew me to this palette in the first place was just how gorgeous it is. I found that when I tried to create looks that the mattes kind of just blended away. Like you can get looks, but it takes a little bit more work than you should have to do. The one thing that I do really enjoy about this palette are the shimmers. I feel like they have a very fine glitter in them that's just so pretty and reflective on the eye. So I think the shimmers are good, but it's really the mattes that I was disappointed by. I really enjoy this color so I'm really sad this hasn't worked out for me. I definitely want to try it with some different bases and maybe see if I can get it to work because I really am enamored by this color story and the finishes of the shimmer shades. But as a whole, I just wasn't impressed by it. And of all the palettes that I have sitting in front of me, this one would definitely let me down the most. Number nine, and I would say the rest of the palettes that I have, they're pretty good. I like them. I can definitely make all of them work. But for number nine, we have the BH Cosmetics Mimosa palette. So they came out with kind of like a brush collection and this is one of the two palettes that they came out with and this definitely was not as good as the other one that I will mention later on. I found some of the shimmers to be a little bit more lackluster compared to a formula that I know BH is good at. I have a lot of shimmers that I feel like are so good from BH and this one just doesn't reach it. I also feel like a lot of the colors on the eye kind of look the same so you can't really get as much variety as you think you can get by looking at it. So it is really pretty and if you do like the color story you can get this at an affordable price and it's fine and I'm not saying I dislike it there's just some things that I would change about it and it's not my favorite palette that I've tried from BH so I would steer you in other directions but of course if this color story does call to you you might like it in the first place I don't even really care for the color story in this and then when you put the quality on top of that and just the closeness of the colors that's why it's ranking at number nine number eight is the elf and J Kissa to the rescue palette I did a whole dedicated review on this palette this month. I will link that down below. And for the most part, this is a great $20 rainbow palette. I think the quality of it is decent. Now, it's not the easiest palette to work with, but I think if you don't have a lot of color in your collection, this is a great way to go. I love how this palette was curated specifically. Just the way that the colors are laid out and the colors that J. Kissa chose, it just makes sense and I love that. So I really do like this palette a lot. I just noticed there are some colors that work a little bit better than others. Like Sookie right here, I wasn't too crazy about and some of these deeper shades in the middle can be a little bit harder to work with. I just think creating these colors at an affordable price is very difficult to do. So even though I'm saying the quality might not be the greatest, for $20 I think it's a really nice palette especially if you're lacking these colors in your collection. This is a great true rainbow palette. It's $20. It's just not as good as the other palettes that I have to mention but I don't dislike this. I think it's a good palette. For sure. Number seven is from a new brand that I've been trying out. This is Odin's Eye and it's called the Friha Diva Palette. I got this in PR and the brand really interested me. So this is a Swedish brand and I just absolutely love the whole concept and packaging behind the brand. It's so detailed, so well thought out, very inspired kind of packaging. I absolutely love it. So I have a number of other palettes and products from the brand. It's just last month, this was the only one at that time that I 
had the chance to play with. I've since played with more palettes, and I have to say this palette is probably my least favorite of all of their palettes, but it still is a banging palette. It's just this one is the warmer palette, and you guys know I'm not a huge warm fan, but the quality of this is really good. This is a pretty affordable brand as well. Just the whole color story, the theme, even down to the font of the color names. Gorgeous! Absolutely stunning. It's a new indie brand. I've been trying to test out more indie brands, so I was very excited to be able to try this palette. So this one's really nice. The colors do blend very good. For me, I would say it's more of a color story thing, so I am not as tempted to reach for it. But the shimmers in here, they have some really cool duochrome glittery kind of colors in here too that look really cool on the eyelid. I don't know. I really liked the look I came up with this, but I just know I'm not going to reach for it as much because it's too warm. And they also have other palettes with better color stories. But this was a good palette. I'm happy to report back that I do like this brand. I did get some questions about that. Moving on, we have the ColourPop and Mulan collaboration. This is going to be number six. It took me a while to try this one out. It was sitting in my room for a while. But once I did, as expected, I was very happy with this. I specifically love the glitter shades in here. I think they have a very nice formula going for them. A formula of glitter shades that I've really honestly never tried before. They're very opaque. Like the glitter doesn't separate too much. It really does give you that layer of glitter all over the lid. You are going to get some fallout, but but as a glitter lover, it is what it is. I'm not too picky about that. And the colors, the mattes, and all that, they blended out fine. And it's just an easy to grab for palette. Very great, neutral, everyday kind of colors. I do enjoy it. I think it's very nice. It might possibly be a favorite of mine from ColourPop because it really is just a great color story and really great formulas that they added in. Moving into number five, this is the friend to the Mimosa palette, but this is the Avocado Toast palette. I absolutely love this, you guys. I think the quality in here is very good. It's matching up to that BH formula that I love and I feel like the color story is very unique. I don't find palettes that have a color story like this very often and I do enjoy the quality and all that this has to offer. Everything from the packaging to the quality. Very nice and you can create very gorgeous looks with this palette. Overall, this is definitely a hit for me and it's very affordable. It's $16 and a lot of times you can get BH on sale. So this is amongst my favorite palette from them. Moving on to number four, we have the Kaleidos, the Escape Pod palette. I've been mentioning this a lot in videos just because it really stands out to me. I think it is a gorgeous palette. And one thing that I always look for is, does it inspire me? And this palette really leaves me feeling so inspired. I can think of so many looks that I want to create. I love the whole finish of this middle row. It is stunning, gorgeous glitteriness. And they just absolutely killed it with this palette. She's a bit thick. What's in Side really matters and they did a good job so I've been loving this palette all month. Moving on to number three, Marc Jacobs. I can't lie man, they killed it with this palette. This is the Extravagance palette and the colors themselves honestly nothing special. You have these colors in your collection. Marc Jacobs has a great formula and these glittery kind of shades right here, they aren't glittery but you know they have a very strong glimmer to them. They're very foiled and metallic, really gorgeous and just overall this is one of those small palettes that you know what kind of look you're going to get when you have this palette so nothing about it's overwhelming or if you have a specific look in mind and this palette contains it like you just want to grab for it so it's really nice I have nothing bad to say about it this is my idea of a glam going out kind of palette I mean I would wear it in the daytime but I feel very very comfortable with the colors in here all right so number two and one they're basically tied I don't even want to introduce one as two and one as one because they're so different also I placed number two as the Natasha Denona bronze palette and the number one as the Pat McGrath Mothership Divine Rose 2. I've gotten more use out of this because I've had it longer. This one I only got in the mail like a little over a week ago and these are so different because the bronze palette is really neutral everyday colors. I'm wearing it right now. I'm just loving the neutral looks that I can get. I'm very comfortable with it and the quality of it's fantastic. But then we have the Divine Rose 2 and this one is so colorful. Like I feel like I couldn't compare or rank one over the other because the truth of the matter is I'm going to use this one more but I just love the color story of this. The only thing I have to say is I feel like all of my browns looks kind of look the same with this but I like the look so I'm okay with it. The quality of this has been absolutely fantastic. This is an everyday palette for me. I feel comfortable with 
it. It's going to end up being one of my most used Natasha palettes. This one's not going to be one of my most used Pat palettes, but I've definitely had a lot of fun creating brighter looks while I'm at home, so I have been reaching for this a lot because I just want to see what I can do with this palette. You know, you're only given 10 shades, and I've been shocked at the amount of looks I've been able to create, but you know, once real life starts and I want to look a little bit more mature and presentable, this one is going to be put back into my collection, whereas this one I will leave out on my desk. So right now, while I'm at home in quarantine, playing around, doing crazy looks, filming for my YouTube channel, the Divine Rose 2 is number one. And I do have to say, it was my number one palette for the month of June. However, I'm not saying it's better than the bronze palette because I love both. So that was it. That is all I have for today's video. Pretty quick. Those are my rankings of all of the palettes I've tried for the month of June. Let me know if you like this style of video and if I should continue doing it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would really appreciate it if you would take the time to do so. So the majority of the palettes featured in this video, I most likely have a review on these palettes. I just don't have one on Odin's Eye yet, but I probably will do one soon. And I don't have one of this one or this one, but the rest will dedicated review videos on all of them. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.